What's up guys, it's MCJ, Matt Collins Jones here, and I'm back with another video about Power Automate. And this time we're looking at environment variables. Environment variables are a really useful tool that Microsoft released, uh, I think just the end of last year or the start of this year, which allows for more ALM processes. So this means that you can, um, you can specify values that may needed to be hard coded in the past in your Power Apps or your Power Automate cloud flows. Uh, and you can have these be dynamic values coming from somewhere else inside of your Dataverse environment. This is really important because when you're moving things from sandbox and dev to production, um, you may in the past have had to go in and update certain values and, and write them to different things. Uh, examples of this could be things like writing uh, to certain endpoints that may be um, sandbox endpoints and then needing to update them to the production endpoints when you go into the production environment. Environment variables are really useful, so let's take a look at them. So I'm in, a, I'm in a solution here. Um, you're kind of seeing a little bit behind the curtain. Uh, I have a lot of cloud flows and, and everything else. Um, but in here, in a solution is where you can create your environment variables. So if I click on new and go to environment variable, fourth one down, get a little pop out from the right. So this allows me to create an environment variable that we can use and reuse in certain, envir in, in certain environments. So for my, um, for my environment variable, let's choose some, let's just say MTJ uh, test var is going to be my environment variable. As you can see, I've got a display name here and it also gives me a schema name uh, here, which is prefix of my prefix for my publisher in Dataverse. I can also add a description if I want, but I'll choose not to in this instance. And then I can choose the data type and this is where it is key. I have this list of data types. So I have a decimal number, I have a JSON array, I have text, I have a yes or no Boolean, and I also have a data source. So a decimal number is just a decimal number that we can use. Um, this should specify maybe version numbers and things like that that you might want to check. JSON array allows you to put multiple pieces uh, or multiple properties inside a JSON array, and then you can use that in your Power Automate. Um, so this could be a payload for something, or it could be like a block of text or a block of uh, uh, items that could be specific to your environment. Um, sort of like, you know, your URLs, your versions, your you know prefixes for sandbox production, etc. Text is just text, so it'll just display as text. Uh, yes or no boolean is just a yes or no boolean, so maybe you want something like um, if um, your environment variable is set to yes, go down this path, if it's set to no, down on that path, something like that. And we also have data source. So at the moment, the only data source that is, um, is able to be used as an environment variable is, a, um, is SharePoint. Uh, you can use uh, an environment variable, I think, for um, for Dataverse and SQL in the future for triggers, uh, but for actions, I think at the moment it's just uh, just SharePoint. Uh, I'm not I'm not too sure about the, the the SQL and the Dataverse thing at the moment, but I know SharePoint is one of the only ones that's supported at the moment. But in future, they will be bringing um, a, like a dynamic way to specify environments for uh, both Dataverse and for SQL, which is really cool. Um, in this instance, I'm just going to choose text just to show you what this does. And this gives me a default value and a current value. So the default value is the default value that this environment variable will always use. And then the current value is if you want to override that default value um, and have the environment variable use that, for instance. So we'll put in um, this is the default value. Um, so we can put that in and we can press save. And it goes off and it creates our environment variable for us. Now let's show you this in a flow. So we'll hit new flow, uh, new cloud flow. And what we will do is, great, now it's loaded up, let's do something. So what we'll do is press uh, we'll just trigger uh, it manually from a flow button, trigger it manually, and then we will drop a compose action in, because I love compose actions. And then in here, we will hit the dynamic content, and the first thing you will see is your environment variables. So 
the, this is the, at the top of all of your lists um, in this new editor of the um, environment variables currently in your environment. So there are a bunch of ones out of the box in uh, by default, but then we have this one here, MCJ test var. So we choose that one and it goes in there. So it knows it's a text environment variable, it just drops it into there and it's all good to go. Let's put uh, in environment variable as the name uh, cloud flow. Uh, and we'll press save and we will test this out and we will see what it does. So we'll press test, we'll manually trigger it, we'll say test, we'll run the flow, click done, say flow runs successfully, that's great. And then in here, it says this is the default value. So that's what we that's what we created earlier. So it's a way for you to put these things into your flows. Now let's go back to our environment variable a second. MCJ test file and let's edit it. So I'm in. So let's say I'm in a product. I'm in a sandbox environment at the moment. I could make that default value, maybe the live URL. And then when I'm in here, in my sandbox environment, I could uh, come in here and say, this is the current value. And then when I import this into my next environment, it's only gonna bring through the default value. It will not bring through the current value. So there's two methodologies to this. You can either in your sandbox environments, choose the default value to be your production things and therefore when they're moved into production it will always have that default value so we won't need to give you a current value or you can always point them to be the sandbox values and then when you move them to production you can add a current value and therefore it'll add um, that that right value. The only issue with this is it does create an unmanaged layer inside of your solutions. If you're using managed solutions you just need to be aware of that. Uh, otherwise you want to do this the other way around. So we will add this in here, we'll hit current value and we'll hit save. And that'll save. Cool, done. Now let's rerun this flow. Let's press test. Let's manually trigger it. Click done. Flow run successfully. And we'll see this is still the default value, not the current value. So there's a current limitation with environment variables in flows, whereas it won't pick up the new value until you um, turn the flow off and turn it back off on again. So let's turn this off. See, it's off. We can see the warning message. Turn it back on again. And it switches to say turn off. Um, then we can just run the flow from here. Uh, run the flow, click done. We can see it run and then we can go back in and this is the current value. So there, that is how this works. So um, something to be aware of, something to be uh, you know mindful of. This is how you create environment variables. This is how you use environment variables. Um, in my next video, I'm gonna show you a few more advanced techniques to environment variables because they are a really handy tool and you really should be using them for loads of things. Uh, they're fantastic for ALM, so you can import things in and do all those managed and unmanaged stuff um, and, and you know do that ALM with the customer. That's great. So yeah, environment variables, fantastic thing. I really like them. You should really like them. If you're not using them already, you should start using them now. I hope this video was useful. If it was, if you could like it and maybe share it with a friend, that would really help me grow this channel. If you've not already, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.